Okay, last time we talked about uh, what area is. So let's review that real quick. It's right here, uh, the number of squares that can fit inside a shape. Right? We deliberated and we discussed and we decided that that was a pretty good way to define it. We talked about how we could use other shapes, right? What other shapes did we consider? Yeah? Uh, uh, hexagons. Hexagons work well. Can we stack those and tessellate those? Mm -hmm. Hexagons, yeah? You could use smaller triangles. Triangles, yeah, they would tessellate. Yeah. Squares? Well, squares is what we settled on. Triangles. Triangles. No. You said triangles. Rectangles. We could use rectangles. Any other shapes? The shapes did not work very well. Yeah. Polygons. Polygons. A square is a polygon. Uh, oh. All shapes are polygons, uh, except for circles. Was it, um, octagons. Octagons. They did not work very well. What else did not work very well? Yeah, circles. No. Circles. No bad idea there. Okay. They, they have a, the gaps in between them are really hard to fill. Okay. So squares turn out to be a real nice thing uh, to use. Okay. And in a in a rectangle, we almost got all the way to the end there, and then I, I gave that to you for homework. Right? We, uh, we had a rectangle, and we were putting squares in there. Okay, just slide them in there. And we started to realize we don't really need to put squares into that space, right? And then count up all the squares. Agreed? We don't need to slide them in there and then count them one by one. There's a faster way even. Okay? So what would be a fast way to figure out how many squares would fit inside here? Uh, still. Or Avery? Mm -hmm. You could just do like one side, fill it up with one side. Okay, just fill it up along one side. And then, like, let's say it goes all the way nicely like that. Do it on the side too. And then this side as well. Then you can just do four times seven. Maybe. Seven, yes, seven. Yeah. So we could just lay squares along two sides of it the long side and the short side, right? Two opposing sides, two perpendicular sides. Uh, then we'd know that there, we can fit seven along here, and there's room enough for four, one, two, three, four, of those rows of seven, right? And so that by, almost by definition, is multiplication, four times seven. Four times seven is how many would fit there. So without even having to put the rest of them in here, I can figure out that there's room enough for how many squares? 28 squares. Okay. Uh, do I have to even take squares out and lay them down like that? No. No, how else could I figure out this? How do I figure out that there's, there's enough room for seven squares to fit in here? You gotta try it out. That's what I'm asking. Do we have to take them and lay them down into the rectangle, into the space, Jason? No, a ruler. A ruler is exactly, well, it's not exactly that, but I mean, it can be thought of that way. It's like a, just a straight tool that, uh, it's not squares, but it, you can measure just the length of one side of a square and see how many of those squares can fit in a certain space, right? And they could be centimeters square, or they could, they could be squares that are an inch long or a foot long on either side. Whatever they are, you can measure how many can fit in that space. So we could do it that way, and, and then we don't even have to get squares out. We can just figure out how many squares there's room for this way and how many squares there's room for this way. And, we multiply those two because we know how many squares it fit. Okay, so now we're we're moving away from having to lay down the squares, and now we're just calculating how many squares you can find. And so we come up with an equation, a formula, what kind of formula that can be used for a rectangle when we measure this side and this side. Length times width. Length times width. The area, the number of squares that can fit in this rectangle. Length times width base times height, whatever measurement times whatever measurement, as long as those two measurements are what? Uh, not equal. Not equal. Not the same, not equal. They don't have to, like, this, this doesn't have to be the same as this, right? What's that? 
full, there could be parts, there could be fractions. We'll actually look at that later more in detail, but they could be fractions, it could be decimal, yeah. Same shape? The two sides have to be the same shape? Oh, never mind. That's what I'm asking about. The two sides, what, which two sides should I, like these two sides that I measure, in order for them to actually tell me how many squares can fit, these two sides need to have some kind of relationship to each other. Yeah. Uh, oh, never mind. It's, I haven't really said it before, it might be, you know, a little bit of trickiness to it, Tiana. They have to meet. They have to meet. Anything special about the way they meet? It has to be a right angle. A right angle, which means for anybody who might have forgotten what a right angle is. And then like 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Right angle, 90 degrees. Very good. Or perpendicular, we call them. They have to be perpendicular. If they're not perpendicular, then we kind of have an issue, right? Then we can't just say, well, this side and this side. Because if I draw this flat side here, and this one's a little bit off, well, I can measure how many squares fit along the bottom, right? Like, oh, there's one can fit there, one there, one there. But once I get here, well, that's outside the shape, right? The square's going to fit inside the shape. So we have an issue. And then if we measure along this side, well, then we have the same kind of issue. That square is outside of the shape. Yeah? But, but, then, but then you could draw a line down the middle and see how many it takes to go up that line if you're drawing a triangle. And maybe that, maybe that's the way to go. Maybe it's not. We're going to figure it out today. Yeah. We're figure it out. Okay. Right. Should we, so may, maybe the secret lies in, well, Always making sure that we're measuring perpendicular things. Mm -hmm. That's kind of important. Yeah. See, okay. It's kind of right. Go ahead. Yeah. You can use like a triangle instead of square. But oh, we could change the units that we measure with. Yeah. We could do that. Uh, but let's just say it turns out we don't. Right. Just for simplicity's sake. All right. When we measure, I mean that's a good idea. You could count out uh, like all the thirds, mm -hmm. or like like if there's thirds. Yeah, like maybe that's a third of a, sh of a, of a square. Yeah. Yeah. Just like see if all of them are equal enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. Certainly. Yeah, we could cut that out, and maybe that'll fit over maybe some other part of the thing. That becomes. That's kind of hard. Right? Yeah. So Harder even than just laying squares that actually do fit nicely, right? Mm -hmm. It's time consuming. It's not only time consuming, but now it's even more difficult. You have to measure, you know, how much of a square do you have. I remember I had one math teacher that said if they, when you're doing the square thing or any shape, it's like if it goes out of the shape then you count it as half? Yeah, if we want to approximate it, we're not going to get exact that way, right? But that, that could work. Yeah, Tiana? But, but then, what about just drawing the, the line and then making it right angles and counting how many squares go up and then multiplying like okay. how you did with the rectangle? All right, well, let's, let's move on then. Uh, you can see this, we're moving on to a triangle, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, and this guy's, you know, says you're not made of square units, and he's not. That's a square. Like, uh, you're not perpendicular. So I can't really use the same idea as a rectangle. Or, well, maybe if we're tricky, we can. So this is what I want to work on together. Like, don't tell me a formula. Boring, because I don't really care if you memorize the formula. But can we? play around with this shape somehow. Can we, we can copy it, we can turn it, we can cut it up, we can do all sorts of things, and maybe we can rearrange it so that its area is a little more obvious. Dalton? Yeah, I made a right, right triangle. Okay, a right triangle. Yeah, and uh, then I just made a rectangle and I... All right, so uh, that's what we call a special case. Yeah. A special case. So if we have a right triangle, Okay, where one of the corners is already 90 degrees. And what did you do, Dalton? Um, then I kind of just made it a rectangle. So you like made a copy of it? Yeah. And fit it together? And then you can find the area of the rectangle and divide by two. Now here's a question. Now this is a right angle, because that's how we drew it. This is a right angle, because we drew it. For this to be a rectangle, this would also have to be a right angle. It looks like it is, yeah. and we know that it is, but how do we know for sure that it is? We can't, we can't, just, we can't just say, oh, it looks like it. We have to measure it. Well, you can't even rely on measuring things, because 
What if it's so close that we just can't quite tell? You know what I mean? Then we ask you. Looks like that. Well, we can't ask that. To know that that's 90. Can we show that it's 90? Uh, the transformer blocks go down, how many blocks go down? Well, we're, we're not trying to find the area. I'm trying to figure out, is this even 90 degrees right here? Yes, it's 90. How do you no, know? It's not. It's not? Where is it? Because it doesn't line up with the... That's what we're trying to figure out. Is it? It is. We're trying to figure out you how can you draw the perfect yeah. square in it. You can draw. Because I drew this thing? Yeah, you can draw the perfect square and it lines up with the edges. How do you know for sure? If you do a perfect square, the end of the square would go across with that line. How do you know that? on what we can see, what well, it sure looks like. There's a, aren't there a lot of things that look like, I mean, optical illusions. Let's take those, for example. Have you, have you seen an optical illusion before? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It looks like something, but it's not that thing, because it couldn't be. Okay? Now, what we're looking at here looks like this is a 90-degree angle. So, I mean, it just follows common sense. It should be a 90-degree angle, okay? In mathematics, sometimes we have to prove beyond a doubt that something is true, okay? Without saying, well, just look at it. It, it. it works. It looks like it, okay? So how can I be sure that this is a 90 degree angle? Anybody wanna take a crack at that? Yeah? I don't know. You don't know? You thought you had something? Yeah. But you're not quite sure, Lane? No, you can guess. You can guess, but that's not what we're doing right now. Avery? Mm. Never mind. Okay? A rectangle has to have four 90 degree angles. It like, does. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is, is prove that this is a rectangle. You can't start saying it's a rectangle and say, oh, because of that. It's a, right? We don't know that it's a rectangle for sure. Yeah? You can measure the sides, and if the top is longer than the sides, then it's a rectangle. No, it, even a square is a rectangle. A rectangle has. Four sides, 90 degree angles, all the way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah? The two vertical sides have to be equilateral with each other, and the two uh, edge on them also have to be equilateral. They both have to meet. So these have to be the same length as, as each other, and these yeah. two have to be the same length? Are they the same length? No. Yes. Yes. The, the How do we know they're the same length? Because it's the same triangle. It's an exact copy of the yeah. original triangle. We drew this triangle. We I literally copied and pasted it. Spun it over. So yeah, they are exactly the same length. So this is exactly the same length. This is exactly the same length. This is the same length as this. All right. We know these are 90 because we made them that way. But how can I be sure that this is 90? Well, if those two are 90, then that one's 90. Those two are 90, then that one is 90. Why? Because a rectangle and a square are both 90 degrees. Right? A and a square are both 90 degrees kind of getting there, but you have to prove to me that there's, that when I put two exact copies of the same triangle together like this, that this has to come out to be 90 degrees. Because it's just... Well, I don't know, like, aren't, okay, so like the corners of the triangle, so if like they weren't um, rectangles, aren't they like both the same size? So like whatever size they are, like that plus that equals 90? The, like, that plus that. Uh -huh. The, well, the angle of the triangle. This angle? Yeah, that angle? Yeah, that equals 90 degrees. Does it? it I don't know, yeah. does it? That's does like what you have to figure out. That's true. I mean, that's a way to say that that angle measures something, this angle measures something. Does this angle plus this angle always equal 90? Is there some way to prove that? Yes. How? Oh. Is there something you know about triangles? No. 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 There's three sides. <laughs> three sides. So maybe something about the angles? No? No, 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 and the thing that JC said about this angle and this angle would have to be 90? Yes. 
and you somehow put that all together in one like yeah. couple sentences maybe and say because of this and this and this and this, these two would have to add up to 90. Tiana? Okay, so because they both add up to 180, the, all, all the angles add up to 180. All these angles add up to 180. And then because we copied and pasted and made another triangle, yes. which also adds up to 180, yes. all the sides equal, yeah, 360, thank you. And, and, just, okay. and then from 360, they, they you know, then you divide it by four, and then you get 90. And it is true that 360 divided by four is 90, but what, that's how what if this is 90 and this is 90, this is 91 and this is 89? You know what I'm saying? That is not yeah. true. But yeah. then it's not a triangle, it's an all the same triangle, then it's a different triangle. Because well, the intuition tells us that you're right, but we don't have a mathematical argument. Let's do this. Uh, this angle plus this angle plus this angle is what? 180. Okay, how much is this? 90. All right, so if this is 90 and all together they're, they're 180, how much is left that this angle and this angle have to be? 90. Right, 90 plus another 90 is the 180. Right, this angle plus this angle is 90. It would be there. Yeah. They're each 45 degree angles. They're each 45? No, no. One of them could be 50, one of them could be 40, one of them could be 36, and the other yeah. could be this, yeah. uh, the other number. Right. So they don't have to be 45. Well, okay, so if the two of them, the two of the corners add up to 90. These yeah. ones? That one and that one? Um, they would have to add up to 90. Then if you put another side on the other one, they add up to like half and half. I don't know how to say it. Like, it's difficult. Like when you add two of them, like that one and then the one, like. There's a green one and an orange one. Like those both add up to 90. So green plus orange is 90. Yeah, so okay. then you add the extra triangle, then you can split it through like halfway, you know, and then, okay, so a triangle, both uh -huh. triangles. Uh, 90, 90 and 90 on the corners plus. Yeah, 90 and 90. And then the other way though, like the other two, like orange and green. But on orange the, and green. And then on the other triangle. Or green and orange. On the other triangle. It's the same thing. What's the same? This, so this is 90. the same as something? Or the, those, like that one's green and that one's orange. This one's orange and this one's green? Yeah, and they both add up to 90, so then when you put together orange and orange and green and green. Uh, this is the same as the orange one? Yeah. Do you agree with that? No. 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 no? Um, oh. The green one is the same as the oh, angle yeah. that you just colored orange. Uh, so so the orange this? Plus, yeah. So that one would be orange right there. Okay. And then this one over here is green. So because 180 is the sum of all the angles in a triangle, and this is 90 of it, then this plus this, orange plus green has to be 90? Yeah. What do we have? Green plus orange. 90. 90. Okay, so now it's a rectangle. So it could be 43 and 40. Yeah. Is that 8? But it's like 90. No. Wait, yeah, 43. 43, 47? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it could be. But whatever those two are, they would always have to add up to 90. And so if I put them together, they should make it 90. So now we have a 90, 90, 90, and 90. So we have what? 90. I know things like that can be frustrating when your math teacher is sitting there, standing there and saying, well, you kind of know, not quite, we got to have to do When you get to see it, it's right there. Of course it's 90. Why are we bothering with all this? Okay? That's what mathematics is. And if you're looking to just like hurdle those things and just say, well, we don't have to really worry about all this middle stuff. Let's just jump to the end. Okay? There's a big gap in the middle that you're depriving yourself of. It turns out that if you took the time to deal with it down the road when something comes up later, it becomes much easier because you took the time to understand this easier thing in more depth, okay? Instead of just saying, well, we can just assume. And you wind up assuming things that are not true, even though they look like they would have to be true, okay? That happens all the time. So get out of the habit of assuming things, and when you can, take a minute and prove things to yourself, like we did here. All right, so we have. A special case, right? Right triangle. Turn the right triangle around, and then we have a rectangle, yeah. right? And so here's the. Can we call this? Let's call this the original triangle. It's the same thing, right? Let's say that that's the one that we copied. Okay. So it has a base, and it has a height, 
right? Yep. yep. So the, the, this triangle had a base and a height. Turns out it's the same as the base and the height of this rectangle that we made. Yep. yep. Okay. So, so the area of the rectangle is what? Base times height. Base times height. Divided by two. Divided by two, it gives the area of the original triangle. Yeah. Divide that by two or multiply it by one half. And we have the area of that triangle. But that is a special case for a triangle that has a 90 degree angle to start with. Yeah. Okay? So we have to show that we can do maybe something similar. There might be like one extra thing to do. Okay? What can we do? Does anybody have any idea? for any old triangle out there. What? Tia. Okay, okay, so when it's just, I wrote my zipper, <laughs> when it's just, uh, when it's just a normal, you know, a weird triangle like the, the, that one there, mm -hmm. just, just draw a dotted line down the middle. Okay. And then make sure that it's right <coughs> angle. Make sure it's right angle, that's important to say. Yep. Okay. And then count how many, Thingy squares it takes to go up that. Okay, you count how many squares, same as like getting a ruler out, right? Yeah, measuring yeah, it. Yeah, measuring okay. it. And then do the bottom one, and that's base, and then got the answer. Oh, wait, and then you have to divide by two. Why? Because when you just do the base times height, it's just finding out the rectangle. And it's Which rectangle? Square. Can you draw the rectangle that. What? When we just do base times height, can you draw a rectangle that has that base and that height, and therefore base times height is the area of that rectangle? Uh, you could. You know that it's half. Because a triangle. Because it has a right angle. Good job. And, 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 and it has a right angle, it's a half? No, but, but no, right. it doesn't Wrong. have to be a right angle. But You're going to draw the rectangle that has sure. that base and height? Sure. Good job, Dalton. Proud of you. Mm. Okay. Stand up for what's wrong. Good job. And then, like, do this separately. Yeah, no. But, yeah, no, yeah, hold on. Think about, think about the original triangle, right? You would measure from here to here, right? You get your ruler, you would measure from one corner to the other. Not usually, I mean, we could, but it would be weird to measure from here to here. And we'd have to do all this stuff like actually construct a 90 degree angle, which. How can you be sure you're doing that? You have to get a compass, maybe. Okay. Uh, so breaking it into two, I don't know. It's not the most convenient thing we could do. But if this base, this B represents the base all the way down here, and this H represents the height of the entire triangle, and therefore the rectangle, right? Then what does base times height tell us? The area of what? Uh, a rectangle. The rectangle. Of, that, of that rectangle, that black rectangle. No doubt. Tiana? A triangle is half a rectangle. Wow. And they learn that. It doesn't matter what shape or size the rectangle is, but it's always half. And Why? Because it just works like that. How can you be sure? Uh, uh, rectangle. I just don't know, like, if you think about a square. What's that? Yeah. 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 So so when you put them together, it's a square. But when you put the one that's to the right, that one's a rectangle. Right? Yeah. So the triangle is going to be 90 degrees. Well, this isn't necessarily a square, it might look like a square, but it doesn't have to be a square. I can make this I can make this go way out there and then that definitely wouldn't be a square. Well, you can stretch it out. When you multiply it, right, or when you copy paste it and flip it around, it looks like a square. It looks like a square. When you copy paste it and flip it around, it looks it, it's a 
Just because it looks like it doesn't mean that this and this. triangle is half of the rectangle, do look at it in two parts. Look at it in this part and that part. This part is clearly a rectangle that's been cut in half. And this is a rectangle that's been cut in half. So half of this little rectangle is the triangle, half of this little rectangle is the triangle. So the whole rectangle, right? Half of that is this triangle. So, one half. So, not just for the special case, but for any triangle, we could do the same thing. We could set it down, we could draw a rectangle around it, say base times height is the rectangle, and since we cut it right here, this is half of that part, that's half of that part, so the triangle is half of the big rectangle, which is base times height. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was trying to say the whole time. Okay, well now it's what I said. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's always half. Tri or triangles always have square or rectangle. I mean, you were saying it was half, but Dalton showed that it must be half. Yeah, I just didn't know how to show it. I knew the showing was. is important. Yeah. You gotta show why it has to be half. And it makes it's not complicated. It's not too difficult for you to understand. Okay, unless you've given up, which you shouldn't have done. I did that. Dalton brings it back home says, well, look at that. That, this part, and this part are clearly the same, which means they're, they're both halves, right? And this part, and this part are the same, so that's half, right? So if it's half of that part, and half of that part, then it must be half of the entire rectangle. Okay. Uh, how about I had another class do this. Save 
Save what? No, I'm just making a copy of all the things we just did. Could save them. Do you want them? No. All right. So that was that was a cool idea. We just say, well, there's the base, there's the height. Draw a rectangle. Okay, it's half of that rectangle by Dalton's argument. Uh, how about if we could take a copy of it? Why not? I mean. but we, we went out of it a different way. We made this be a copy of the triangle, okay? So we know that all the pieces are the same. When I move this over there, I know but then that... But the same if you draw off the other side. Ooh. Right. But before we drew the rectangle first, I mean, we weren't quite sure that the, the other pieces were the same as the rectangle. But this way, we can't be sure because we made a copy of the, of the, of the triangle. If we move that over there, then we get... Pretty much the same thing. We have base times height is that rectangle. So we know it's exactly half because the only things that are up here are two of the original triangles. Right? So area equals again one half base times height. Right? Um, can we just like stick to like the base times height and stuff like that instead of doing all this other work? Yeah. That's Guys, yeah. listen. No. Okay. The answer is no. Stop trying to shortchange yourselves, telling yourselves that you can't understand this. Am I trying to tell you that every time you have a triangle to find the area of it, you have to cut it into pieces? No. No. What I'm trying to get you to do is think what you can do. You are all intelligent people, okay? But here's the thing. Until you've done something like this, and it sounds like maybe you have in the past, until you do something like this, this is magic. It's just oh, measure the height, measure the base, divide it by two, magically I get the area and I have no idea why. Okay? But now, you have an idea why. And if anybody, if anybody asks you, well, why, does, why is it one half of base times height? You can show them. If you forget, is it one half base times height, or I can't quite remember? Is it is it one half this times this length? What is it exactly? You can easily recreate this little model. I just flip it over there and move that over there, or draw a rectangle around it, and that's half, and that's half. It's one half base times height. Okay. okay. That kind of thinking, that kind of skill, comes in handy later when we're dealing with x's and x squares, quadratic equations, and parabolas, and vertexes, and Solving what? quadratic <laughs> equations with the quadratic formula, okay? All of that could be a big mass of confusing formulas and numbers and letters that I don't understand, I don't know why they work, but I just try my best to memorize all of them. Okay? It's what comes from what I said just yesterday. Math is not a bunch of stuff that you have to memorize, okay? Until... Am I not speaking English? It's really good. You are. Yeah, it's good. Am speaking, I using English words? You're speaking mathematician. <laughs> Am I? Yes. yes. Yeah. What math words have I used that you're not familiar with? Quadratic 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 Am I asking you to understand quadratic no. equations today? No. But we're going to assume something. Right. So wouldn't you rather Learn it now. be able to understand it rather than have it be a, a mysterious remembering thing? Yeah. Look, I watched a 
kinds of people. Try to learn this stuff. Both of these ways. You do memorize, sometimes do all right, but you get very frustrated, red in the face, and teary-eyed on people who took the time to have patience and work with this, and not only endure it, but engage in it and offer suggestions. Those are the kinds of students who don't get so frustrated. But you're like teaching us how to like copy and paste it. We don't have copy and paste in like our paper. I thought pencil and copy. True, but you know, but then you're cutting out the squares. And plus, like, oh, oh, and I can tell you have something to say. Go ahead. I'm just saying that, honestly, I mean, I was taught to memorize the formulas mm -hmm. and go by that and memorize them. Mm -hmm. So yes, I have. Yeah. And I'm willing to give that a try. I just, I'm so confused. I And I'm willing to learn. I'm just so confused on Everything. what yeah, you yeah. just taught. Uh -huh. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that Right now, just the formula sounds easier because I don't understand like you did. Yeah, yeah, right. basically yeah. same. Same term. Well, okay. And then like you let everybody else explain it, which mm -hmm. gets confusing. So like, okay. so so it's like confusing. for the people saying yeah, for the Then what we need to do, if we want to do well, and this is what we're going to do, okay? Every time we learn something new, we're going to understand it. not just going to memorize it, okay? I can't force you to not fall back on memorization. I can't get in your brains and make you make good decisions, okay? But if you are confused, you have to be fair to yourself and to me and say, I'm confused about that. I'd be glad to explain it again, okay? But I'm not going to not explain it so that it can be shorter or what you might think is easier, but it's actually not, okay? Do you want these papers? I want people to stop zipping things up. Okay. I don't. I don't need those papers. Those are for your notes. Okay. Listen. Listen. I would be glad to explain this again, and I can understand like your peers explaining things can be confusing. So. I'd be glad to explain those things, but you can't just check out and say, I, uh, I don't know, this is too, why are we doing this? You do it some other way. I know this stuff. I've learned this stuff. I've been confused by this stuff, and I've been unconfused about this stuff. Okay? I want to help you be unconfused from the beginning. Okay? But that doesn't mean that everything is just super easy. Right? But for some people, it's We'll talk about it another time because I don't want to hold you up.